In the early days of the Vietnam War in 1966, the communist Viet Cong forces were about to overrun Saigon. The United States responded by deploying the 1st Infantry Division. At the Battle of Xi Cam Mi, Charlie Company was sent on essentially a suicide mission to bait the enemy out of the jungle. They were pinned down by enemy fire and completely surrounded. It seemed like they had no hope of being rescued. Let's find out what happened here in one of the bloodiest battles of the Vietnam War. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Caffey. Welcome to another episode of Task in History. Staff Sergeant William Pitzenbarger received the Medal of Honor for his actions at this battle. And when I heard an account of what he did, it's hard to imagine just the type of character it takes to display the level of self-sacrifice that he did during his efforts to rescue the pinned down soldiers of Charlie Company. This video was made in partnership with the movie The Last Full Measure, which reenacts this entire battle minute by minute. It stars some of my favorite actors of all time, Samuel L. Jackson, Ed Harris, Sebastian Stan, and Jeremy Irvine as Sergeant Pitzenbarger himself. The Last Full Measure is now available on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital, so check it out right away. The soldiers in this unit considered themselves professionals, so they weren't made up of many draftees at this point. From first-hand interviews from survivors of this battle, they said they enlisted to do their duty to their country. They wanted to stop the communists from taking over Vietnam. And this isn't about whether the war was right or wrong. This just gives us some insight into what the troops on the ground believed they were fighting for. So, how did it get to the point where the battle became that bad? There was a mix of mistakes and bad luck that led to the situation becoming that dire, and here's how they got there. Operation Abilene was designed to send this rifle company with the strength of only about 134 soldiers out into the jungle as bait. They were looking for the elusive D-800 battalion of the Viet Cong who had a strength of over 500 soldiers. The Viet Cong had three machine gun positions with stationary 50 caliber crew served weapons. This massive caliber weapon can chew through trees. They also had additional 30 caliber machine guns and their main battle rifle was a variant of the Soviet AK-47. It was the Chinese made Type 56 assault rifle that fired a 7.62 round. Now the heaviest weapon that the Americans had was the M60 machine gun. Most of the troops were armed with their main battle rifle, the M16A1, which fired a 5.56 round. And the original M16 of those days had a 20 round magazine with no optic and no rail system. They were also armed with M14s and M79 grenade launchers. Also on our side, we had the power of the American artillery, which was 105 and 155 millimeter howitzer cannons. But the artillery in this battle ended up making Charlie Company's fight even more difficult, and we'll see why in a minute. The original plan was to draw the enemy out and then slam them with artillery and have additional rifle companies rush in from the rear, surprise and destroy the VC elements. But the reinforcements never showed up. They were slowed down by the jungle and they didn't reach Charlie Company in time like the plan had called for. They made first contact with a small contingent of a Viet Cong patrol while they were trudging through the rubber plantations about 68 kilometers east of Saigon. They were ordered to chase the enemy deeper into the jungle. The intelligence reports from the time say that US leadership knew the Viet Cong would have the advantage. It was their home turf and they knew the battlefield well. They outnumbered the American forces by five to one. It's very rare that the US forces try to walk into a battle where they're outnumbered. The US Army walked straight into a trap here. The enemy had set up a perfect ambush. In the first moments of the battle, three of the four platoon sergeants were wounded. The Viet Cong machine gun positions opened up and rained fire down on the US infantrymen. So right off the bat, they lost most of their command and control and were reduced to fighting for their lives. Charlie Company is pinned down and will remain pinned down for the duration of the 18 hour firefight. Most battles in Vietnam were short skirmishes. In the average engagement, US forces usually suffered one or two casualties. By the end of this battle, 38 Americans would lose their lives and 80% of the whole company became casualties. Now, the entire battle is recreated in detail in the last full measure. If you want to see how the battle was fought minute by minute from the point of view of the American soldiers, then check out The Last Full Measure, now available on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital. 
Tracy Dirks interviewed one of the survivors who said he was looking around seeing all of his friends getting wounded and killed, and when he was finally shot, he was actually relieved. This meant his friends would know he had fought during the battle, and that gives you some insight into what these troops valued most, even in the middle of the battle, with their lives on the line. What they really cared about most was not letting their fellow soldiers down. The American forces try to regroup and create a perimeter defense as the Viet Cong commanders coordinate surrounding them. They call in an artillery strike on the Viet Cong positions, but the fire lands on their own location instead, and this was actually a tactic that was used by the Viet Cong frequently. They would move in to close proximity during battles to mitigate the advantage of the American artillery and air power. Their next move was to radio for backup. The two U.S. Army helicopters that are nearby at the time hear Charlie Company's request, but they refuse to go help because the battle is too fierce and they fear they'll be shot down. Two Air Force Power Rescue helicopters are listening to the radio broadcast from their base, and they volunteer to help the Army when no one else would. Sergeant Pitzenbarger isn't even a part of that team, but he volunteers to go with them and help out. He jumps on the helicopter and they take off to the location of the fight. They reach the pin down Charlie Company and drop their jungle penetrator, which allows soldiers on the ground to send casualties up to the helicopter. The litter goes down through the thick jungle vegetation, but there's a problem. The infantry on the ground aren't familiar with the equipment. So Sergeant Pitzenbarger volunteers to drop down off the helicopter to the ground while under fire one of the things that every soldier from Charlie Company remembers seeing is Sergeant Pitzenbarger's clean boots and brand new clean uniform as he came down the rope into the jungle. They're thinking, who's this guy with the clean uniform? But they're surprised when he assists in loading 12 of their wounded men onto the helicopter, all while under fire. The three enemy 50 cows finally get a bead on where the helicopter is hovering above the jungle ceiling, and they direct their fire onto it. One of them is hit and needs to make an emergency landing at a safe location. The pilots signal to Sergeant Pitzenbarger that he has to get on the helicopter now in order to leave. In that moment, he has the opportunity to get back safely to base, but instead he waves the pilot off and chooses to stay with the surrounded, outnumbered infantrymen on the ground. He gives up his ride to a wounded soldier who had been shot in the rear, and the helicopters leave to make the emergency landing. Pitzenbarger starts to treat the wounded and return fire while redistributing ammo from the dead to those who are still able to fight. He covers a wounded American with dead bodies and tells him to hide because he thinks they're about to be overrun by the Viet Cong, who are cutting the throats of any wounded Americans they find in the perimeter still alive. He was wounded three times while coordinating these rescue efforts. Night falls on the troops as the battle rages past 10 hours of fighting. At night, the Viet Cong used bullhorns to communicate a coordinated attack. There were three major Viet Cong assaults from the east where their base camp was located, and each time the American forces are just barely able to repel the attacks throughout the night. In fact, another soldier receives the Medal of Honor for his actions in repelling those attacks, two Medal of Honor recipients in the same battle. In the morning, the soldiers from Charlie Company, 16th Regiment, find Sergeant Pitzenbarger dead. He was killed by an enemy sniper. In one hand, he had his rifle, and in the other, a first aid bag. He gave his life so others may live. He grew up in a small town near Dayton, Ohio. We're talking about the kind of person who always knew they wanted to serve, even from a young age, when he first tried enlisting in the military in junior high school. He had completed over 300 missions in Vietnam prior to the Battle of Xi Kami. It took till the year 2000 for him to finally be awarded the Medal of Honor. The surviving troops from Charlie Company campaigned for years to have him receive the recognition that he deserved. This was one of the bloodiest battles of the entire war. Before dawn, the American forces were able to kill 40 enemy Viet Cong and wound another 100. The rest of the battalion were finally able to locate them in the morning. Staff Sergeant Pitzenbarger is credited with helping to save the lives of 60 soldiers that day. If you know somebody who's interested in or who maybe served in the Vietnam War, please remember to like this video and share it to those people so that they know about this incredible true story. 
To see more details and hear the full story of Sergeant Pitzenbarger's sacrifice on that day, watch the movie The Last Full Measure. It quickly became one of my favorite Vietnam War era films when I saw it, and you can see it too. Be sure to buy it or rent it on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital. Thank you for watching. I'm Chris Cappy, Task and Purpose out.